everyone. Welcome to the VR AR Bytes podcast, our weekly show featuring the movers and shakers here in Central Florida. Today, my guest is Kyle Moran, founder and CEO of 302 Interactive, which is an Orlando-based company that develops interactive experiences across many different industries, including theme parks, healthcare, hospitality, and education. Kyle is also an active member in the Orlando gaming ecosystem where he supports and mentors other studios and startups. Well, Kyle, thanks for joining us today. Tell us a little bit more about 302. Absolutely, thanks, John. Um, so 302 Interactive, uh, like John mentioned, I'm pretty involved in the gaming community and I actually started seven years ago as 302 Studios, a game studio where we were just kind of getting involved with storytelling and experience creation from a game perspective. Uh, I went to UCF to do the game design program. And in doing that, I got really involved here in the community with uh, some marketing companies, some simulation companies, really figuring out how VR and AR could be applied to their industries. And what I ended up finding was there's a lot of uh, game technologies that are used to build VR and AR applications. Um, so in getting involved in that area, I kind of haphazardly fell into doing a lot of contract work and we ended up growing ourselves towards uh, shifting from the game studio to 302 Interactive, which is now uh, what we call like a digital user experience lab. We build yep. virtual reality, augmented reality experiences, like John mentioned, across a variety of verticals. Uh, we've done projects with uh, Universal and attractions. We've done startup companies where we've built products like Verapy, which is like a VR physical therapy product. Uh, really just looking at, to see how we can apply game design, and game tech to help other industries and, and what we call have game designers help save the world. Yeah, and it's really interesting, you know, because we see so many of the companies in our in our community that started off as game studios mm -hmm. and have either continued to be game studios, but then set up a separate business that's focused on enterprise Absolutely. or they pivoted to enterprise completely, you know. Absolutely. But I think, uh, I mean, that's a that's a great example of the skill set that we have here in, you know, in our community. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of seeing the, like you mentioned, the, the that technology just being applied in a more cohesive way and a more I would say a more contextual way which is exciting okay so so what we'll do we're going to now move on to our five and five which is five questions in five minutes cool. so Kyle what's the most interesting project that you've seen or worked on that uses XR technology yeah um good question I would say probably all of the stuff that I saw out in for Universal, I got the opportunity to work with Universal out in Japan, and oh. we're starting to utilize some of that technology, as you'll see in the coming weeks and months with their rollout. Um, I can't talk about it too much, but that's that. There's a lot of exciting things that the attraction space is looking into with virtual reality and AR and all that technology. So watch that space. Um, yeah. Is is um, would you th would you say Japan is ahead, behind, or at par with where we're at in the United States with the use of the technology? I would say they're at par. They're actually working a lot with folks from the United States, like like ourselves. We went out there. Um, so they're really looking to stay on top of it with us, but it, it's a, there's a lot of collaboration there, which is cool. Okay, great. All right, number two, what do you think the biggest challenges are facing adoption of XR? I'd say user experience overall. Um, from an AR perspective, we have a lot of the technology and software uh, along the way, but that hardware barrier to entry for a consumer to put a headset on, it's just not there yet from user experience standpoint. I think VR is more along the way, but even then it's still sweaty and messy and it's, it's just not as natural as, as it could be. Uh, so that's yeah. part of the biggest area. Yeah, and I think, you know, we've seen so many announcements the last month of all these new devices that are coming out, and right. we're going to actually be hosting a, a chapter event in April that's going to be focused on some of the new technologies. So, nice. awesome. I, yeah, I think uh, I think this next year is going to be really exciting in terms of new new devices out there, Agreed. which will hopefully help the user experience, right? Yes, exactly. It's all right, number three, who in the VR AR community inspires you, or who do you follow to find out what's happening? I've been following for years, Charlie Fink. Um, yeah. He's a Forbes writer, and I've just been following a lot of the writings that he follows. He he just really understands the the space as a whole. Um, so really, from like a business, and I appreciate that he's got sort of an outside perspective. Like I'm a developer, um, I don't really like getting too into the weeds of like how things are working and all that stuff. I like that he takes that outward approach of like 
this is the business of it. This is the application of it. And this is the way that it's shifting the industry. Um, so he gives a good broad outlook on that. Excellent. Yeah. A number of people that I've interviewed, you know, said that they follow Charlie Fink and yeah. as do I, right? I yeah. mean, he, he's definitely, uh, definitely a good voice. Absolutely. Right. Number four, are you working on anything at the moment that would be interesting to our members? Yeah, we are actually. Um, we're actually working on two things. One is what I call like play consulting. Um, we're really trying to look at how games and play are interact with each other. And we're trying to abstract what I consider play design and finding how to help other industries, like I mentioned, like healthcare and education to incorporate play into their systems, into their processes. So not even worrying about the technology and the game design and adding VR and AR, but really at a core level, how do you shift from a mindset of results-based to play-based thinking and how play-based thinking can help your industry or your organization? So that's something that I've been working on this year. Uh, we call it everyday play. Um, and then the other thing we're working on is a backend system for mobile AR called Monocle. It's a, hopefully <laughs> what we're planning to release is like an SDK for developers so that they can create AR content in an app uh, of their own, but be able to host all of the content on the cloud so that it's it's much easier to access, it's able, it's easier to update, and you can kind of grow that as a small ecosystem for yourself with AR, which is something I think is missing right now with augmented reality. Excellent. And then um, the last question, number five, what would you like to see from the AR, VR AR Association? I would say finding more ways to get um, the game community involved with other communities. Um, I think the games industry, even outside of VR and AR, they are, they at least should be treated as like the standard for user experience in spatial computing. They've been making 3D games for over 20 years. Um, the industry knows everything and it's utilized for everything, but I don't see a lot of like the, the veterans of just traditional game development communicating with VR and AR uh, communities and in, in a way that could help with like user experience and design. And, and I, so I'd like to see more facilitation of that, that kind of bridge between, hey, even though you're not in the VR game space right now, we still want your input. We still want you guys participating in our community. And I think that'll help to bring other game developers into the VR and AR community as well and have it feel more accessible. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, great, Kyle. Thank you so much for taking a few minutes to, to meet with me today. I really appreciate all the, you know, the, the work that you guys are doing and uh, your involvement in the association. Absolutely. And, and so everyone today was our interviews with Kyle Moran, CEO of 302 Interactive. You all have a good day. Bye guys.